good at they are in business and so nobody can fault them as far as they are they, they think they are importers and uh, exporters they are they think that they are, they are also in business and uh, and therefore they have the right also to make uh, certain comments and and even agitate but as to whether uh, the agitation i mean will also carry so much weight as far as this arrangement is concerned because we believe that you know every government would like to gov would like to to protect people who are taking risk in, in, in their country, to be able to uh, promote businesses, start businesses from the scratch, to be able to, you know, the government, this government has a policy, a flag, one of their flagship policies is the 1D1F, and we are focusing on industrialization, trying to industrialize the country, and therefore uh, we're doing what we call import substitution by producing most of the things we, we have to import now, producing it in the country. And so we want to encourage as many people as possible who want to venture in, in the industries to set up businesses. And government definitely will want to, want to protect their interests. And that is how come it will be very difficult for government, even if we want to set, government wants to set with, the, uh, with, the, with the, the importers and exporters, as to whether government will go back to, to what they expect the government to do, it done that thing altogether. Will, will the government give a consideration to it? Because if you listen to them, mm. a few of them say that they only woke up to the news, I mean, towards the end of the year, that this new directive is going to take place. And then, boom, just, just for the first working day of what? the year, that has happened. And a lot of them also make the point that they have had their goods into the country and have had their documentations way ahead of the time of the implementation of this. This will be unfair. To I can t I can tell you in confidence that we have had a lot of meetings. I mean, we have done a lot of engagements with the stakeholders in this. As far as this arrangement is concerned, we have. We have met the, uh, uh, those in the rice business, we met those in the cement business, we met Guta. We, we've done a lot of stakeholder engagements to be able to sensitize them on this new, uh, new policy that is about starting now, that was about starting. And so we give them a lot of education on it and we're sure that they were come because they asked all the questions they needed to ask. They wanted to understand the situation and we explained it to them detailed. And so we are sure that they, 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 they understood this and also asked all the questions that they wanted to ask. So nobody can tell us that they just woke up and boom, government has started a new policy. No, they knew the policy was going to take effect from the fourth. Enough consultations have been done, engagement, and um, uh, that's how come, you know, and it, is, it was still ongoing because, you know, that as I said earlier on, government need to move. I mean, we have to shift the paradigm. Paradigm have to shift to a certain way, a way that will, will make the country more productive than just being a country that we focus on importing and exporting. We should be able to be a value addition country where we, we don't focus our attention so much on bringing raw or, or, or processed goods to the country to sell. Note that those countries that are doing production, they, the produ producers or, or manufacturers have a lot of subsidies from government, their government. Their government subsidizes a lot of their, for, for them. So they're able to produce at cheap rate and they get countries like Ghanaians or people from other parts of the world to go and buy at that rate and also come and sell them, dump it somehow on us, whether we, we like it or not. That's not what we are even talking about. We are talking about a situation where government now thinks that there's a need for us as a country to move in a, a certain way, a way that will help us. And that way is adding value to the raw products we have so that we'll be able to process and sell it to get more. In this case, sometimes some of the people may also do what we call import substitution. As a, now, things that either to import, we're able to manufacture them in Ghana and sell it to make more money for the country and note that this will also create a lot of employment i mean better than in the, the area of import 
that may not be able to create a lot of, of employment for. And what even for me has, uh, has is, is, is the punchline in this case, is the fact that people have risk in certain business. It, that, that risk, is because a lot of people in this world are, are risk averse. They, they, they may not even wish to even set up businesses. But when somebody determines or sit down and determines or, 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 or determine to venture into a business, it means that the person has taken some risk. And there's the need for government to protect said people. We, we, have, ne we have never said that uh, we, we have reached. In other, in other words, we, we, no, government has not said anywhere that uh, we, we have uh, the, the local industries have the capacity to be able to produce to meet the demands uh, of the country. We know about that already, but we have to start from somewhere. Note, that is why government is still engaging Guta. I mean, albeit the policy has started, but we are still measuring it. The, as I'm talking to you, that the ministry is undertaking, a, 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 a conducting a research in, to know what is happening, the price range in the market, so that we'll be able to compare with the future prices that may come up. You know, you know the mere fact that we don't have the capacity or full capacity to produce to meet demands doesn't mean that we cannot take off. We, are, we can still start. And we believe that when we start, we'll get somewhere, we'll get to a situation where at that time we think that, okay, we have the, the capacity now. Because now everybody, will, people will be motivated or encouraged to set up businesses. That is exactly what we want. We want as many people as possible who have the financial muscles or capacity to start business or to, to, to start so that we're able to industrialize the whole system. I mean, when the country is fully industrialized, then we are sure that we will not get to a stage where there will be, uh, there will, there will, there will be uh, gaps, where we will not have the, the, the capacity to, to produce to meet demands. And so whilst, whilst you say that you are still having engagements with Guta now, what appears or what will appear from the side of the trade ministry, for that matter government, as the way forward? For us, the, the way forward is what we are, we are doing. You know, you know the, the essence of the policy of one, one district, one factory, is to be able to get to a stage where the whole country will be industrialized. We wake up one day and we see that we have a lot of factories, or in the, a lot of industries in this country. And, uh, and not only industries, but people also in the middle of, of the value chain, like in, in the area of vehicle manufacturing, for example, we have a lot of people venturing into the component manufacturing bit of the business. I mean, take, let's take the vehicle assembly, for example. We have some companies coming in here to start vehicle assembly, all bit I, I guess at the, as a, at the semi knockdown stage. I mean, but we believe that we'll be able to get there. We, what we expect those people still buying spare parts or importing spare parts to do, that they should just go to those places that they buy spare parts, encourage them to come in, I mean, and establish here in the country so that they can even take a stake in it. I mean, maybe they can give us something, either land and become part of the business through equity, uh, equity ownership. And when it happens like that, We'll be able to have all these setups in this country. I'm talking about those in the company manufacturing bed. So we'll not only have the, 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 the original equipment manufacturer or the vehicle, vehicle assembler only in Ghana, but those in the component manufacturing area will also establish in Ghana. That's what we are doing. So we want these people who import the spare parts to now engage those people that they buy from to come into a setup. That's exactly what we are saying. So the, 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 the point we are making here is that our interest is not only on those who are setting up business from the scratch, but those who are also importing that. We want them to be encouraged to know that the best way to do is not always to import, but to convince where they buy the business from, they convince those people they buy the business to come in to set up. For me, I believe that the government is being even more sensitive than the word sensitive is because the reality is that now the government is is now showing the way. What is the way? The way is for the country to be
to, to, to rely on somehow the country to be in the position to set up business so that we will not focus so much attention on importing to, to uh, importing a lot of products for our country for the country but we'll be able to produce it produce them here in the country and that's what the government is doing note that government interest here is to make sure that people set up in this country i'm talking about we have a lot of industries setting up in this country so that when we have industries setting up in this country there will not be the need for people to import to compete with the i mean it doesn't make sense at all when government is encouraging people to set up and at the same time government is also encouraging people to import what's the mean of that it means that those importing will be competing with people who have devoted much of their, their wealth or resources to set up business that is not too good for business and I guess that is why government's interest is to support those setting up uh, for, for the scratch. Finally, will government have a real look at, for instance, people who, who say or, or have advanced the argument that they have had their goods in and have done their documentation prior to the implementation of this new directive? Will the government now allow them to do the clearance with an old uh, the old avenue mm. for people who have had their goods coming from the first working day of the year to also take effect of the rule. The, 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 the policy is supposed to start from the fourth, which is yesterday. Mm. So the assumption is that now the policy has started. I mean, we don't do anything like, uh, I mean, those things that we are talking about. For me, I don't believe in that. I believe that the policy started yesterday. So if your goods came in yesterday, the policy has to take effect, whether we like it or not. As far as it is a, it is a law now, it is an ally. So we cannot do anything about it. It has to start. And that is what has happened. So we at the Ministry of Trade and Industry is watching. I mean, we're watching with keen interest to make sure that we, 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 we encourage as many people as possible to start setting up business in Ghana and encouraging people that they even do business with elsewhere to come in to stop. So that, I mean, we, all of us, we industrialize together and get a country where we'll be able to work and produce to meet the demands of the people.